The Wasteland. The Burial of the Dead. April is the cruelest month. Breeding lilacs out of the dead land. Mixing memory and desire. The idea of making an app of the wasteland came about about a year ago, last Easter, when I went over to Acton to visit uh, Max Whitby of Touch Press in their offices. Uh, and we came up with three ideas on the spot. One was to do the solar system, which is now uh, released and has gone on to win the awards and do very well. And the other of which, totally different, was the wasteland. We wanted to make an app to see what the possibilities were as far as for Faber were concerned, and the Faber poetry list in particular. And therefore the idea was, what would be the most iconic text that one would choose to focus upon? Because part of the point of the app seemed that on the one hand, it has a very wide angle. It in, in brings in all kinds of materials that don't normally sit together. Um, and on the other, it's capable of focusing in great detail upon a particular text. One of the great things about uh, an iPad app is there are almost no constraints on what you can put in, the types of media you can use. Previous ideas for combining poetry and technology uh, either sounded great, but I couldn't see how we could execute them, or the people who could execute them didn't have the right understanding of poetry to make them work. I was concerned that, that the text be at the centre and also that it be possible for readers to still connect to the oddity of the text, that, that it would not be uh, surrounded by apparatus that, you, that you, you had to kind of call up the apparatus. You had, to, you had to want it to be there rather than it being there despite you. And I think it's still important that the poem have a chance to survive in all its strangeness. When you open it, you will go to the burial of the dead. You'll go to the start of the poem. It's only after that that you start to see the other functions, the readings, the performance, the perspectives, the notes. There's what we call the navigator. I can tap on another part of the poem and go straight there. It visualizes the entirety of the poem in the right-hand margin. There are a number of readings of the poem in this app, including uh, two by Eliot himself. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. Summer surprised us, coming over the Stan Bergese. Well, that's something I didn't realise an app was capable of doing until Stop recently. I didn't realise you could switch so easily from hearing one line as articulated by Ted Hughes, another line articulated by Elliot, a third articulated by Fiona Shaw. And drank coffee and talked for an hour. Binga keine Rusin, stamm aus Litau, ich Deutsch. What are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of this stony rubbish? I think it's very interesting the way that Fiona Shaw's reading makes the poem seem like a more conversational object, a less high, high mimetic object. Dry stone, no sound of water. The really interesting thing, as far as I'm concerned, is that the app has made it possible to bring alive things that we didn't know that we had in the archive. We discovered that there was a, a hitherto unknown recording of Elliot reading The Wasteland. It's much earlier than the 1946 recording, it's 1933. So he's still a youngish man. It's much less formal, the voice is more unpredictable. I don't think that that would ever quite have come into focus had it not been for the app. Staying at the art studio, my cousin, he took me out on a sled, and I was frightened. He said, Marie, Marie, hold on tight. And down we went. In the mountains, there you feel free. I read much of the night and go south in the winter. I suspect that it's the case that in the Faber archive, there are other materials, or that the, the great hinterland behind a figure like Auden or Larkin or... Uh, pound, notably. It just encourages us to explore in a quite concerted way. I think it means publishing, it, obviously it needs to look at doing more than handling texts. Can we become competent in handling high quality video and performance and uh, an audio? I used to be an editor here and now the role is much more like that of a producer. 
um, okay, the budgets are small compared to film or TV, but that's what it is. You're making something happen with a variety of skills from software engineers and designers uh, and indeed a television director on one hand to Elliot scholars, poetry, academics um, and actors on the other. It's an area that very much crosses into other businesses and industries. So only earlier today I saw that a TV company has made what they're calling an enhanced ebook, a video book with an author. Uh, it's for the royal wedding, but this sense that book publishers will have a lot of competition from other industries as well, and so we have to learn these skills. I think that the unpredictability of the app is one of it, the more encouraging things. I think that if we knew exactly what we were doing, it would be considerably less interesting. And so in a way, it's not as though it's a pilot, but it's, it, it, it may take on a certain kind of life its own that you hadn't expected. I'm not certain that the iPad um, is a savior, um, but it's a new, it, it's a new form of cohabitation, for sure. I don't think books need saving in the sense that the iPad or any other device can and will save them. I think I don't like the save mentality for the publishing industry. Uh, what I do think is the books business and writers and publishers should, could and should use technology to their best advantage because other people will if we won't.